All right, hello, Calculus 2 students. Uh, welcome back. You know, here we are. We're going to start Chapter 8. I got a little sunlight, sunset coming in behind me. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start Chapter 8, and uh, it starts with all, at the beginning of Chapter 8. We're going to learn new integration techniques, new advanced integration techniques. But technically, what happens in Section 8.1 is that there's no real new techniques. You know how to do this stuff. Uh, so, so the new techniques start in section 8.2 and we'll get there in the next video. But I've got several problems out of the book here for section 8.1 and, and again, we're supposed to know how to do these. So let's go in order. I numbered them uh, out of the book number 18 here. Uh, it's the integral of, these are integrals, uh, indefinite integrals, antiderivatives. Uh, so this is the integral of x cubed. And then under the square root there is uh, x to the fourth plus one dx. So, so I know how to do this. You, you, you know, we got our, what do we got? We got our basic rules, tons of basic rules memorized, or we can look up, you know, 18 to 20 basic rules. Uh, but otherwise, other than that, we got u substitution. The main technique is, some, is a substitution, a change of variable called U substitution. So now that's probably useful on all these. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let U equal what's in the radical, X to the fourth plus one. Of course, then you find DU, which is the derivative, which is a four X cubed DX. And then you should be happy because this is fitting this pattern very well. When you go to replace this stuff, here we go replacing this, that square root is now the square root of u, because that was my u inside the square root. Now watch this. That x cubed multiplied by that dx, I mean, this is all multiplied, so I can rearrange this. That x cubed times dx is right here. It's actually, if you move the 4 over, it's a 1 fourth du. I hope you can see that. I'm going to write it like, I'm going to replace the x cubed dx with what it is. It is a 1 fourth du. Sometimes I solve for some. I mean, I could, uh, I could solve that. I could have solved that for you. I divide by four. Uh, one fourth du equals this x cubed dx from the next step here. Replacing that in here leaves me with this problem, and that's easy. This is just a power rule. Um, uh, u to the one half. Add one to the power. U to the three halves. Multiply by two thirds. Uh, multiply by the one-fourth out front plus C, and we are finished. Uh, what is that? A one-sixth, if I clean that up a little bit. Uh, and what's my U? X to the fourth plus one raised to the three-halves plus C. So there we go. U substitution and then a power rule. That sun is coming in kind of bright. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's try this guy, number 24. <clears throat> this looks... A little funny. I think I'll let you, this is a 3x over x plus 4. I think I'll let u equal that denominator. I think I'll let u equal x plus 4. Now du is going to be the derivative, which is just a dx. So I don't see anything too interesting. And, we, and if I start to replace this, I may feel confused a second. Here, watch this. Well, you know what? You can pull the 3 out. You cannot pull, you pull constants, multiplied constants, you can pull out in front of the integral. Uh, you cannot pull out the variable x. Um, <clears throat> so that x is sort of confusing me there a minute. Uh, I'm going to just leave it there. Uh, uh, the denominator is what I called u, and this dx is du. Now this is dangerous ground. I mean, you're doing u substitution. You're supposed to be changing the variable into u and not have any x's around. Um, so... <clears throat> but there's this lingering x here. So we've done this before. Sometimes you have to go here to your u substitution. You have to get a little creative. You have to solve 4x in terms of u. So in order to replace this x, we have to find out what it is. Since we let u equal x plus 4, guess what x is? x is, move the 4 over, u minus 4. So this x turns into u minus 4 over a u, and then... I think the way you deal with this is now you, so that x turned into u minus 4. Now I think you kind of bust this up is what I like to say. You have the 3 out front, 
you have a common denominator of u, but you break it into two separate denominators. u over u is a 1 minus a 4 over u, which is a 4 over u. And now you have a couple different integrals there. When you integrate the 1 with respect to u, of course, the answer is u. When you integrate the 4 <coughs> over u, that is the 4 times the natural log of u plus c. Now, I made one mistake. Can you see it? Well, that 3 is in front of the whole integral, so it is distributed. I kind of just did two separate integrals. That 3 is multiplied by that answer, and that 3 should also be multiplied by this answer. So that's 12. Uh, all right. Well, uh, let's fill in our u back in there. What was u? x plus 4. So u is an x plus 4 minus 12 times the natural log of x plus 4 plus c. And that's it. You know, I bet you if you were to look this one up in the back of the book or look this answer up, they might not have this answer. I want to show you what they would do. <clears throat> I think they might have this answer. 3x minus 12 natural log of x plus 4 plus c. I wonder if you can tell what happened between here and here and why it's different. Well, I'll tell you. They distributed the 3. When they distributed the 3, they got 3x plus 12. But then that, that extra 12 was just a constant hanging around, and so they added it into the arbitrary c. And the arbitrary c absorbed that extra 12 there, that added 12, that added constant. Wow, that sun is bright. Sorry about that, um, but it's a good video. Uh, all right, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Um, let's try this guy. <clears throat> Probably u substitution. What do you want to let u equal? This is the integral of sine x over the square root of cosine x. I think I want to let u equal what's down there inside that square root. I think I want to let u equal cosine x. du then is the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine x dx. When you replace all this, uh, here we go. We're replacing all this. Uh, I'm going to get a new integral. That denominator is going to be the square root of u. Is that right? That's what I called u. Yes, yes, yes. And that numerator is a sine x dx. You know, that dx is always kind of off to the side or in the numerator. You never, you never consider it in the denominator. You never replace it in a not. No, no, no. Uh, so that's a sine x dx. Well, that's what this is, sine x dx. We're just off by a negative sign. I'll move this negative sign over here, and I'll have a negative du. So when I replace the sine x dx, it's replaced with a negative du. That's awesome. That's a we do we use u substitution to fit a familiar form. This is a familiar form. This is a uh, uh, just a power rule. Move it up and do a power rule. I'll help you. Uh, you move it up and you call it u to the negative one half du. And now you do a power rule. You add one to the power u to the one half. You divide by one half, which means you multiply by two. There's a negative sign out front, plus C, we're finished. There's the answer. Except we should plug back in what U was. U was the cosine of X. And we could write it as a square root if we wanted. That's it. You know, you could check any of these you wanted to. We're doing antiderivatives. I guess you could do his derivative. Watch out for the chain rule. Do his derivative, do, his der do these derivatives, and you, these derivatives should end up back in the, as these integrands, if you ever wanted to check these. <clears throat> All right, I got a couple more. This is probably the most difficult one. This number 34. I stared at it a while before I could figure out what to do. Sometimes you got to kind of, you got to just grab a rabbit out of nowhere, grab a rabbit out of your hat, like the magicians used to do. Um, and so the rabbit is this. Let's multiply the denominator by e to the negative x. Of course, you can't just multiply the denominator unless you also multiply the numerator by e to the negative x. So in other words, I'm multiplying by a 1, which doesn't alter the, the value of that integrand. It's just going to alter the way it looks. <clears throat> 
So I'm multiplying by e to the negative x over e to the negative x. And what I get is in the numerator, I get 4 e to the negative x. When I take the e to the negative x and multiply it, distribute it through that denominator, I get 3 e to the negative x. And when I multiply e to the negative x times that e to the x, you add exponents, and you get e to the 0. e to the 0 is a 1. So we've altered the look through this legal move here, and it now looks like this integral, which I can see what to do. I want to do another u substitution. I want to let u equal that denominator. See, I can see how the du is going to help me kill the numerator. I, can, that, I couldn't get that before, but in this form I can get that. I'm going to erase this previous problem just so I have a little more room there. I'm just going to erase that previous problem. Sorry about that. And I'm going to finish this. I'm going to let u equal the denominator, 3e e to the negative x minus 1. du is the derivative of e to the negative x is just e to the negative x. Oh, the chain rule spits out a negative sign, so negative 3e e to the negative x dx. Uh, okay. Well, the 3 doesn't match the 4, but that doesn't bother me. I kind of moved the 3 over. Negative 1 third du is e to the negative x dx. I replace all this. Here I go. Uh, the 4 I'm going to pull out front. The denominator is u. The denominator is u. And what's that numerator now? I pulled the 4. Oh, I'm left with this e to the negative x dx. What is e to the negative x dx? According to our u substitution, e to the negative x dx is this, negative one-third du. I'll pull the negative one-third out front and the du right there. Ta-da! We're ready. We fit a form. We did everything. We're here we are. We got a one over u du. That's so easy. It's the natural log of u with a negative four-thirds in front. Negative four-thirds, natural log of u. My u is this, 3e to the negative x minus 1. And there's really nothing you can do with that. That's good. All right, there was one more here. There's this guy, number 40. <clears throat> 1 over 25 plus 4x squared dx. What's funny about that one is you, got to, you could look it up and try to fit a path. It, it just, I, or you have it memorized. I mean, you should have a lot of this stuff memorized, I think. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm sorry. But here's the rule that you need for that. It looks a lot like this rule. Uh, a 1 over an a squared plus a u squared du. And I've learned that that's the arctangent. Uh, at the end of Cal 1, I learned how to do derivatives or uh, integrals of, of these arctangents. That's arctangent. Let's see, what's the rule? The rule is uh, 1 over a arctangent u over a plus c. So I think my a is, if I'm looking at this, I think my a is a 5, if that's a squared. My u, if that's u squared, my u is a 2x. Some students don't get that. You should get that. If that's u squared, then u is a 2x. And then I can just shout out the answer. According to the rule, it's 1 over a, 1 fifth arctangent u over a u 2x over a, which is 5. Now listen, please listen, I made a mistake. I made a mistake on purpose. <laughs> I wonder if you caught it. There's my a. I identified a correctly. I identified u correctly. And then I fit the pattern. If it's a squared plus u squared, it's 1 over a, arctangent u over a. Doesn't look like I made a mistake, but the mistake is when you call u something, you have to go through this change of variable steps, and you have to find what du is. And du is a 2dx. Du is a 2dx. I'm working my way into a corner here. But when du is a 2dx, then when you replace this, the dx gets replaced with a 1 half du. So I like to say it spits out the u substitution, spits out a 1 half. The dx gets replaced with a one-half du, and the result of that is a one-half gets spit out in front of this integral. 
If there's a one half multiplied out there with the one with the one fifth, <clears throat> then there's a one tenth there. The one, where'd the one half come from? The one half came from the U substitution, from the DU. All right, thanks for listening. That was a lot of good work. All right, we're moving, uh, and stuff you know. That's what 8.1 is, integration techniques that you know. It's fun to practice some of those problems before you, it's fun to know what you know before you move into some new stuff and see what you're about to learn. So we'll do that in the next video. Thanks. Do some homework.